Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my review of Marguerite Bennett's SJW Cringe Mine, Angela, Queen of Hell. But first, uh, on Sundays, yesterday, uh, that's the day where I, you know, update my spreadsheet with all of my Indiegogo campaigns ever. Obviously, I'm updating the active ones. And then I uh, parse the parse the data, parse the data in a bunch of different ways, and it's really interesting to um, compare things, compare like calendar year to calendar year. And then I do like, I'm now in my third 12 months of having a business. So first 12 months compared to uh, second 12 months. And, and uh, then even things like, one of the things that people are like, why do you keep, why are you doing these like, like little books, like uh, do as you're told in pandemic. And they're like, oh, those aren't doing as good as your other ones. Well, page count, they're doing better. So it, 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 it's very, very interesting when you can start uh, looking at all that type of stuff. So like I said, Expendables Go to Hell, graphic novel, still uh, in, in demand. Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar, graphic novel in demand. And then Do As You're Told, The Ballad of No has 12 days left, as does Pandemic. It's very interesting, again, looking at data, because you see stuff like Marvel doing okay-ish during a fairly serious recession, and then right out of it, like skyrocketing and they went up. I'm not gonna say up, up, up. I'm just gonna say up until 2015 and then they started plummeting. They have lost all of their gains. And it's interesting to see. So this is a book from 2015, although in, in typical Marvel fashion, when you Google it, it's a seven issue series that at, you know, of course in the seventh issue, they say, we knew this was seven going in. But then it's of a 15 issue run with the same, you know, storyline and writer and it was it, whatever. So this is the last one. This is the one that's famous for the uh, unsolicited opinions on in Israel. That was, um, you know, kind of the one of the first instances of writers at Marvel just being awful, just being awful to people and political and weird. And then when people are like, hey, what's up with this? You, oh, you're an insult. You're. You're a bigot. You hate women. It's like, no, we just hate your writing. I mean, we're fairly indifferent about you. Um, so this is about um, lesbians and lesbians and lesbians. So I'm watching the Aliens movies right now. Out of order, you know, uh, as I do. And, um, you know, one, one of the, you know, canards is like, Aliens 3 is terrible. And I just watched it yesterday and it was actually really good. But there's a very simple explanation for why people say you know it's uh and i call it the uh, the cameron constant and it goes like this once you introduce space marines to any franchise you cannot take it out because people like the idea of space marines you can do less space marines like you kind of, you could focus on like a I don't know, like an infiltration team or something like, you know, like a spec ops. And then the actual, you know, grunts are there here and there. You could do, you know, any kind of story, but you can't take space Marines out without people saying, where are the space Marines? Um, and just similar to Cameron's constant, um, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about uh, uh, lesbians forever in that in any, you know, comic book, once you introduce lesbians into the story, the story becomes lesbians. So what is Angela Queen of Hell about? Lesbians, lesbian, it's a lesbian, it's, it's about lesbian, that's, that's it. Um, I read the first issue, I skimmed the others, much like uh, Kate Leth's, um, that's a hard name to say if you have a little bit of a lisp. Kate Leth's, Kate Leth's, um, Patsy Walker, a.k.a. Hellcat, every issue is essentially exactly the same. So you have uh, Angela, who was created by Todd McFarlane, or no, I'm sorry, there was a major lawsuit about this. It was created by Neil Gaiman. Uh, <laughs> um, that was one of the, you know, m huge modern day lawsuits in uh, comics. And somehow Marvel has the rights to Angela now. I don't understand that at all. So it has uh, Angela from the Spawn books, which is now in the Marvel Universe, and what I am assuming is an OC, an original character of Marguerite Bennett. Why am I assuming uh, Sarah is a... Oh, and if, you, and if you're like, Sarah, who's Sarah? Well, Sarah is a vaguely ethnic lesbian with not 
the side of her head shaved, the side of her head braided. It was 2015. So things were a little different. Uh, her interest in science is uh, undetermined, uh, but she is completely annoying. I, I There's something about uh, specifically Marvel comics made for women. There is nothing more misogynistic. This reads like someone just hates women, like just despises them, like airheads, um, uh, uh, you know, um, narcissists, boring, self-impressed. You're like, w why are you doing this? Because we support women. So I read this, all of this first issue and it was, it was really excruciating. So, but this isn't Angela's story. My name is Sarah. By the way, uh, Sarah has a completely different look and skin tone and skin color in pretty much every panel. That's why I just say vaguely ethnic. Uh, tell me if you've ever uh, seen this before. The vaguely ethnic lesbian uh, lover who takes over the entire... Okay, whatever. I'll say, my name is Sarah. I'm the funny one. Also the pretty one, the magical one, and the one who can play a bitching lute solo. I also have really good hair. If Angela was the envy of heaven, then I was very nearly its exile. I was born among a different cast. I escaped. I was happy. And then one day I was slain. So uh, the story is lesbian. It's lesbians. So then I was like, I can't really get a video out of this. Let me check the, the second issue. And then I noticed they had a, uh, you know, a recap page. You can see their part two. And I go, oh, geez. And she's just babbling, just just babbling. And you're like, oh, God, this is completely un unlikable. And then I was like, ah, I'm, I just skimmed it. And then I went to part three. And uh, wait, part two, part three. They're just, they're using the same, they're just using the cover from issue one. And that's, they're wasting a whole page. I'm going to do a video just reading the recaps and what we're going to see is tiresome, boring, annoying narcissist is overwhelming, the overwhelmingly the archetype for female Marvel SJW characters. So let's just get into it. Hey there, darlings. My girl Angela here is a deadly warrior from the 10th realm, a once lost queendom known as heaven. Recently, everyone, including Angela herself, Learn that she is actually Aldrift, the stolen daughter of the rulers of Asgard, believed to have been killed in her cradle during a raid. Instead, she was raised as a leader of the hunt in heaven, which is where she met me. I'm Sarah BTW, X, it actually says BTW, X monk and enchanting enchantress, charmed, I'm sure. Middle of an epic fight scene, though, I got offed. Not long after, Angela thought I had returned, but it was actually Malekith, King of the Dark Elves, who I had sent from my prison in hell to bring Angela to come find me. Yes, angels go to hell when we die. No, I don't like Alanis Morissette. Shut up. Please, this is the actual dialogue. Well, found me she did. Given that she's the one who's got me killed and stuck here, though, she and I need to have a little talk. Love is a battlefield, okay? I just want to emphasize, I didn't, I didn't make up a single word of that. Uh, so let's see what's going on in issue uh, three. I guess they repeat the first two ones, you know, just, you know, given the update. I'm Sarah. I'm sure you recall. I'm the Gabrielle to her Zena, except we make out more on screen anyway. Anyway, in the middle of a fight scene that would beggar even the best CGI budget, I took a spear to something that should not have had a spear taken to it and got cast down into hell with all of the other dead angels who fun f oh jeez. Oh my god, these people. <sighs> these people spend their entire lives on Twitter and they think that's how, like, again, I'm not trying to be personal. There is this subgroup of writers, um, who they all talk like they've never had an actual friend. Nobody says fun fact in real life. Oh my gosh. Oh, Jesus. Excuse me. All right, I've got to get back to the fun fact. Who, fun fact, Helen keeps us slaves in the afterlife as punishment for the whole supposedly murdering the infant princess of Asgard thing. Angela and I had a little chat about how not to leave your loved ones. 
stuck in the underworld for eons. And as a nice, quote, work getting back together, unquote, present, I showed her the way out. If she conquers hell, then I and all the other angels will at last be free. Ah, yes. Ah. Okay. And how did I learn all this? I had a spy on the inside. Leia of hell. Handmade into the very goddess we are hell-bent on overthrowing. You go, girl. Oh, gee. So now she's not repeating the first two, um, but you, you're going to kind of wish I skipped them. Okay, so. Oh, no. I need a minute. I mean, you can look at the screen. You can see why I'm pre-cringing. Okay, here we go. Ah, my... Ah, darn it. I'm not doing a bit. Like, this is so cringe. Like, my... I'm, my body is refusing to say these words. Okay, I'm not going to be... I don't think I can do the voice and say the words. At least for the beginning. My darling's... Strawberry tall cake. Angela to you. Okay, it's... Ah! My darling's strawberry tall cake. Angela to you. Was an Asgardian princess. Stolen as an infant. And raised among the angels of heaven. She rose through the ranks, became leader of the hunt, and met me, Sarah, sorceress, sass basket, an ex-anchorite on the run. We danced, we kissed, we killed monsters for hire, and when I got axed and sent to hell, Angela came after me. I will say, she took her sweet time. Turns out no one knew angels even got an afterlife, but in the great beyond, we're forced to serve Hela, the erstwhile queen of the dead. But I got my baby back, and the sky, and the world of the living is the limit. Rebellions usually need, you know, rebels? So we took to the slave pits where the other dead angels were imprisoned? One completely reasonable and decorous discussion about identity politics versus slave rebellions in hell later, we've got ourselves an army! Minor hitch. Turns out, aside from the whole, quote, enslaving a race of mercenaries, unquote, hella? is an inexplicably popular queen of the dead. And now her boy band, featuring Tear, Balder, and Skirts the Executioner, is in hot pursuit. Time for the fight scene! It's not just that they hate women. Like, they hate comics. They hate superheroes. Like, everything is, is just, like, malice and contempt. Um, so let's see what happens in issue six. Oh, boy. It's issue six, right? No, this is issue five. Oh god, I got three more of these damn things to read. Hey again, folks! It's your pal Sarah. You know, not everyone gets a second chance. Not everyone gets a chance at all. But Sugar, if this is where I had to leave you, I would be so proud of the things we have done. My baby cakes Angela here came down into hell to smooch me and seize the throne and she is all out of... Wait, no. She isn't. She could smooch for like decades. I think it's the Asgardian thing. Never mind. New exposition. My baby kicked Angela here has endured the three trials of hell to take the crown of the underworld and restore me to life. Together we have risen up as rebel queens. We will conquer hell hand in hand. A lost Asgardian princess and a sass mouth sorceress on the run. Mercenaries, angels, sinners, soulmates, we have come to the end of a dark, quip intense road. Boar down. Balder down. Tear and Scourge and all our bad dreams down. We've got an army of dead rebel angels. We are gunning for the throne. The erstwhile Queen Hela is nowhere to be seen. And oh shit, shh, darlings, mama's home. I, I, <laughs> speechless. I'm speechless. Okay, two more. I'm, I'm just reading this as it is. Ayo! How about that last issue? God, we're cute. So, new arc. New arc. Enemies. Last we met, Hela had conquered Hell. She and I reigned as queens for a hot 90 seconds. And then baby girl here abdicated. Which is a fancy word for, quote, got what she came for, settled all debts. Gave Hella the third degree and bailed back to the world of the living, unquote. So with a sexy sorceress girlfriend, a moody interdimensional teenage daughter named Leia, a talking homicidal hellhound, 
and a mounting pile of bills. Seriously, what is going on in Brooklyn? What's our season four big bad gentrification? What's an Asgardian princess turned angelic assassin to do? The answer is, we have no idea. But since Thor's on the cover, I'm sure we'll all be very excited to find out. And the last issue. <laughs> and I will, I will read the bit they always do where they congratulate themselves for getting canceled for the third time for low sales. And it's all come down to this. My babe Angela and I conquered hell for love and freed the slave angels that ex-queen Hela had imprisoned and even managed to make them an afterlife of their own. I warned you, the big bad was gentrification. We escaped back into the world of the living with our shiny new R.E. moody secretive teenage daughter Leia and her foul smelling, foul mouth, foul everything pet hellhound Thori. A few trips to Ikea and a few fajita nights later, we've got a good thing going, baby. Too bad plots without conflict work great in fan fiction, but not so much in canon. And a terrible, terrific, terrifying villain is coming out of our past. An Angela from an alternate world and time. The land of King James in 1602, where a witch hunter named Sister Angela made a deal to become Queen of Fairy in exchange for the life of Lady Sarah, her love. Check out 1602 Witch Hunter Angela for further details. It's funny, we promise. Some Secret Wars comic book science later, our timelines have smashed, and the Fairy Queen, now called Faustia, has her sights set on New York City. If this is how we've got to go out, then hell, what a way to go! Okay, so this is you know, awful. Awful, 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 but somehow it was all their plan. So then we cut to a classic of any SJW comic is the self-congratulatory uh, page dedicated to the people who got the book canceled. A deal's a deal. Nothing is for nothing. Everything has its price. But sometimes you take the risk and you end up happy. Thank you guys for making this deal with us, for taking this deal with us for coming along on this crazy magical mystery tour from the vaults of heaven to the depths of hell and to all the Ikea's spaceships and ramen joints in between. I'll never be able to tell you how much all your messages meant. Kind, funny, touching, sincere, irreverent, and utterly beloved. I've known since last November that we'd be ending with issue seven. And by the grace of God, Marvel, Will Moss, we were able to plan and to go out on our own terms. Writing this book has been one of the highlights of my career. Angela, the subheader of your choice, has been crazy, literary, punny, zany, dark, and romantic in the fiercest and most fun way. I began this book living in New York City, just starting out, and ended in Los Angeles, happier than I have ever been. Okay, so this is another trait of uh, SJWs and they do it all the time. Apropos of nothing, absolutely nothing, they will tell you how happy they are and they've never been happier. SJWs are the most miserable people that ever exist. You don't become an SJW without being utterly miserable, hating yourself and hating pretty much everyone else. Um, that's why they have to fake every you know uh, human interaction they have. Uh, but, okay, thank everyone, everyone's great, great, great. We super duper got canceled for the third time. But most of all, I wanted to thank you for taking a chance on Angela and Sarah's journey. You kept this book alive. You kept their love alive. Everything here exists because of you. I will never be able to pay that debt back to you. Oh, you could just pay the like $3.99 for seven issues or for maybe we're all 15. You could pay it back. Um, we wrote seven, oh, it was 17 issues. We wrote 17 issues of smooching, Shakespearean space angels. Surely that in itself is a miracle. It certainly feels like it. Thank you for taking the deal. I hope you got what you wanted. I know I did. Now, I actually believe that. I actually believe that. Your goal was to just, um, one of the things they love is like, uh, you know, we got that space, we got that spot. Ha ha, incels, I got a Marvel book, you don't. Haha, ha, mine got brought back from cancellations, yours didn't. Haha, ha, I'm on the shelf, you're not. And they don't care if you read. <laughs> they don't, th these things are not written to be read. I mean, I'll, I'll go to like, you know, 
full page and just start like it's just babbling it's just sitting babbling talking 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 look at all this damn dialogue nobody's doing anything talking talking sitting talking talking oh we're walking and talking 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 nobody's fighting anyone this is a comic book oh we're at the kitchen table that's topical the internalized misogyny of sjw comic book writers i want to write a book about women boring catty narcissistic and just kind of like stupid it's for women if you pretended the audience was men you would have tried harder yeah you would have and that's my point um thanks for watching subscribe make sure you're still subscribed hit the bell for notifications thanks to everyone giving to the gofundme the patreon and the indiegogo your funny original content and an original lawsuit links are in the description expendables go to hell graphic novel jawbreakers grand bazaar do as you're told the ballad of no and pandemic comic book and i will have new and old comic book reviews up all this week thanks bye